Warning, the show contains adult language, so viewer and listener discretion is advised. Welcome to another edition of Up and Knitted. I'm your host, Adrian Babishoff, and if you're new here, welcome as well. And if you're wondering what the show is about, it's entirely dedicated to improving quality of life for both people and planet through liberation and independence, moving you from surviving to thriving and living life on your own terms. Today's episode 267, it's how to save money. <clears throat> I wanted to become useful today uh, for a change instead of a piece of crap. Although it is early in the morning, so I'm about 50% useful, I hope. Uh, 50% crap. Uh, <laughs> good morning, good morning. And I, you know, the, the unemployment thing is hit today. This is, for me, recording this show is, um, this is the 7th of September, 2021 here. We got a lot going on. And I wanted to speak out of, out of personal experience. And I did label this show as how to save money. I figured what would be something that people could use right now to kind of help them out. And I speak from personal experience. I'm not a millionaire. I'm not poor. I'm basically, I consider myself a thousandaire. I'm able to take control of my life and make as much money as I want. For those of you just tuning in, uh, I work eight to nine months out of the year. I take off three months. I I just I get really really ecstatically happy when I think about this. This year particularly really hit me, and I just looked and I says, well, who who do I know takes their children out camping? You know, for a month and a half, two months, three months. Who who does that? And not very many people have the opportunity. A lot of people I met on the road um, camping this year. Um, I called them my mini retirements, and I noticed that there wasn't a lot of uh, of that, like the whole thing I was doing. A lot of people said, I've never even heard of anything like that. How do you do that? And beyond all that, what I want to do today is speak from personal experience of how how am I able to save money and things like that? What have I done? And I don't think this is aimed at just towards people who are unemployed, on unemployment and then they're not getting it right now and they're scrambling. What well, the heck do I just... I think this really goes for the middle class working person who's got, who th- appears to have it all but hasn't really saved any money and is trying to figure out what the heck do I do because you're just surviving, right? You, you got the house, you got a nice car, you got nice clothes, you know, the whole facade, the, the outer shell looks great, but what's going on on the inside... Uh, maybe possibly might be very disturbing to you. In fact, sometimes maybe it feels like it's killing you. I've had those times in my life where I was like, I'm just ready to burn it all. Like, I don't want to do this shit anymore. So it doesn't have to be that way. I think that anybody who's... I, I mentioned this before. If you if you look at the study of, of uh, Elon Musk and others like him, he was living in his office, eating hot dogs, I guess, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for a long time, bathing in the sink. The stories of these people, they didn't come from riches and have stuff handed to them. They hunkered down. But So that's what uh, the key is. They hunkered down. What did they do in order to be successful, uh, to be able to create many things? They just totally hardcore simplified their life now i'm not saying that everybody needs to be a hardcore you know diehard guy like me or like the elon musk and stuff out there it does help but you can just you can pick and choose what you what works for you and let's jump in i guess so don't don't take what i'm saying today like this is what we have to do you know use your creativity that's the whole thing i tried to share and teach on the show is like if you get your mindset down, you get your imagination up and running, you start to uh, develop your own ways of doing things that fits you. So I'm only speaking from personal experience. So what did I do, right? What did I do? I per- I basically went down far below my wages. Uh, that way I can save money. You know, it's a, it's a some of these things seem like they're uh, common sense and very simple and easy, <clears throat> but when I look at the majority of people. They're not really practicing these things. And I don't think that they get the full benefit, the full meaning and the effects of what these things, like what I'm about to tell you. So I went hardcore and went down into RV living, which I still do right now. Currently, we are going to upgrade. I'm just waiting for things to get nasty so I can invest. (laughs) I've positioned myself uh, actually quite well, uh, waiting for these types of moments to show up. But in the interim of all of that, why I have working capital is I I moved into it from a house. Uh, We had a three bedroom house. I was with my uh, wife at the time before we got separated. I got two daughters, which I take care of full time. And I knew I saw the way things were going. And I said, you know what? Couldn't have been planned perfect, right? Uh, Get into an RV park. The mother's 
uh, lives in the same RV park as I do, and I got the kids. They can literally walk over. Well, the oldest one can. I have a special needs daughter, but mumbling off over here. But it's a perfect situation for both of us, especially living in the area we do. It's very, very expensive. Uh, and when we say very expensive, I think no matter where you're at, you could be in Texas, Oregon, Arizona, and look and go, well, I don't pay $900 a month like Adrian does in San Diego, California. You know, I pay like $400, but the wages are very, are a lot cheaper and there's not so many jobs. So you're kind of in the same boat uh, when we think about it in that, that uh, sense there. So, yeah, we got in that RV and uh, it's it's... There's no, it's unheard of where you can pay $900 a month for rent out here. It's ridiculous. The lowest is like $2,000. So I'm, I mean, not and even $2,000, that's going to get you like an apartment or something. So I'm paying, <clears throat> in contrast to a house at present, I'm paying like a third, right? A half of what's really going on over here. And I've got, that affords me the time to, and the, and the efforts to save money. So people are going to ask me how I keep upgrading and how I'm able to live free and do things because I don't have a life like they do. I'm not putting up the facade. You know, I don't really care. My my past five, six, eight years or probably longer is I'm that mad guy that's working, devising ways to create more freedom for himself. You know, the hair is all standing up. Uh, you know, I've got a beard. <laughs> I'm not really shaving all the time. Basically, in a nutshell, uh, my clothes are stained dirty. I don't give a fuck what I look like. I don't give a shit what I try to share so hard on the show. I don't care about the aesthetics of things. I, I'm actually after the functionality of things. So I think that's probably a big dilemma in people's lives is like to do what I do, live in an RV. Like, well, what will my friends think of me and all, you know, who gives a shit what your friends think of you, your family, whatever. What do you think of you? What are they going to think of you when you, if you lose it all? Or you die early from stress of trying to keep up the facade, right? The aesthetics of things instead of the functionality. I think that's this is such a huge... I've never heard it said anywhere else. I hope that's like one of my my uh, keynotes there, one of my things that people would uh, identify me with. Uh, but it's very powerful, very powerful if you think about it. So yeah, getting yourself down, is, it's up to you how far you want to go. The simplicity of it is nice as it's like tiny houses. I guess this can go in so many different ways. Uh, I bought an RV because of the cost of con contracting, uh, contrasting costs of RV versus tiny houses. Tiny houses, you know, you're going to get probably at like $70,000, something that you can get for $10,000, meaning these things, these RVs are already built. Uh, they're way easier and less uh, damaging to, to, to transport uh, from one place to another. Uh, and they got everything already built into them. They're a lot lighter weight. Uh, the problem is I don't think that the interiors are made for full-time living, although I've been living in my RV, in RVs, uh, uh, trailers off and on for the past 10 years. And, uh, I, you know, as long as you keep a dehumidifier, I did a whole show on them. Keep a dehumidifier so it keeps the moisture from mold and stuff going inside and do some some extra work uh, on sealing the outside and things like that. And I, I did an entire show. You guys can check it out, how to buy an RV, what to look for, how to maintain, and all that kind of stuff. So I don't want to make this too much about RV living, but give you guys basically the big... Um, some big points of what you can do to save money. Even if, like I said, if you are uh, a thousandaire like myself, the money just keeps stacking up because it's not going into feeding the facade, right? It's not going into the aesthetics of things. It's uh, feeding into the functionality of your life. And we're going to talk about that. All right, so once you get down from the wire, you figure out what you're doing. If you're living in a house and you, you, know, you want to move down to an apartment or you want to move down to a mobile home or from a mobile home, you want to go down to the very, very bottom, which is RV living, um, you got that down. Um, we need to, to figure out a few things. And this one sounds simple too, but purchase only what is necessary. You know, and I think a lot of people are thinking about that right now. Like, oh yeah, maybe we should just purchase what's necessary now that we lost our you know, our unemployment and stuff, money stopped, we got to get a job. But do we? That's another big problem I see with people is that they're buying a bunch of junk, right? Smart people, rich people, they invest their money. And that's what we're going to talk about, um, uh, move into here, slide these two together is, is every time you make a purchase... Think of it as an investment. 
It's an asset. How is this an asset, not a liability in your life? For those of you who don't know, an asset is something that actually makes you money. It has, holds value, right? <clears throat> Where a liability actually costs you money. It depreciates and goes down. Now, there's a lot of things that are uh, liabilities, like a good blender and stuff like that. It's going to break down. But when we look at the ROI, the return on investment, if you've got yourself a really good blender and you're living off smoothies like I do uh, for lunches, I'm losing weight. Um, I'm My food is, is very cheap. I'm saving money. I'm saving time. I could literally whip up lunches for myself, throwing some banana protein powders and stuff like that in this uh, drink. And it's already blended up, very easy to digest when I'm on the go. You know, I do a lot of physical labor and things. I'm always, every, I don't want to eat a big giant burrito or hamburger that weighs me down. This thing you can literally drink and you can put flaxseed and moringa powder and uh, reishi mushroom powder. The, the possibilities are endless. And you're saving a, a whole butt load of money. So, but meanwhile, this thing is depreciating, right? It's going to break down one day. Buy something that's really good. Like for me, I'm not sponsored by anybody here, so don't worry about that. I'm not pushing it. I don't push anything. I pay to be here. <laughs> but I purchased really good stuff, an investment. I've had a Vitamix blender for probably about 20 years now, and the thing's still going strong. So it's kind of a 50-50, an asset liability. I know parts are going to start going bad on it. But 20 years later, guys, you know, I even used it as part of a business I tried of vending, right? We use the shit out of this thing. So the point I want to make here is that you got to look at whatever you're purchasing, not just save money. Oh, let's just purchase only what's necessary. We'll save money, you know. We'll chintz out on food. I'm like, that's the worst thing to do. Make sure that you, if you're going to chintz out, buy yourself simple stuff like potatoes, carrots, you know, celery, uh, things that are like vegetables and stuff. Keep, keep fruits and vegetables in your life. Just buy the cheap ones, right? And the simple stuff that if you forget, like I do with apples, I have a whole podcast on that. If you buy apples and the things that don't need refrigeration, sweet potatoes and stuff like that, they can all sit in the, uh, in the, the um, counter uh, for a long time. Bananas, they don't need refrigeration. They got their own casing and everything on them. And in case you forget and they say everything starts to turn, throw them in the juicer, bam, you're not wasting anything. So, of course, this could go on. This could go on for a very long time, but I just wanted to get the point out there of looking at this, like purchase what is necessary. And I don't think people fully understand those type of things. You know, shutting just, just shutting the lights off uh, doesn't, if you look at the contrast to understand things, uh, like the energy consumption of a light bulb, it doesn't really eat that that much. It's saving money. I think it's it's just the responsible thing to do. You know, it reminds me of uh, tapping into a lake, uh, which we're it's like that's what we're really doing. You know, aquifers and stuff like that. But if there was a little pond and there was fish and frogs in there, and you had tapped a little pump in there and to to for wash your hands and to get drinking water from, and then it's just dripping. You just let it drip. You know, fuck it. You know, I can just leave it alone. You know, eventually that pond's gonna dry out. We got to wait for rain. There's a lot of things dependent on that 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 pond. Maybe like egrets to come and hunt frogs, and frogs need it to make their babies. There's no other pond around for a while, and they migrate. So you know, you see what I mean is it's it's a responsibility to save stuff because it's just good for the planet, and it's your duty. To, in my book, you know, whether it's nuclear power or coal, wherever you're getting electricity from, to just not waste anything and get in that mode. It makes you feel good, makes you feel responsible, uh, but it also gives you the practice of not wasting anything. Uh, if we get into the practice of, I know I'm going off on a spur here, but when you think this way, just light bulbs, a lot of people miss the fucking point. When you get a job and you got, or, or you start a business, you know, or you're working for someone and you have a job to do, uh, instead of in wasting anything, leaving the little light bulbs on and stuff, you shut everything down sooner than, than later, a lot of savings and money starts to accumulate. And then you start to see where all the fat is, all the extras that you bought. Why would I go buy extra things, you know, and have to pay for them for storage? It all comes from if you constantly practice conservation and awareness in these things and move that into money, spirituality, your home, everywhere, it easily, it becomes your life. It's not a practice. It's something that you are doing naturally. So if that makes sense for you guys. So yeah, uh, buy only what is necessary, but bigger than that 
is buy is think of everything as an investment so like i said very smart people the vehicle that i'm sitting in right now is in 1996 and i'm so happy to be able to do these shows for you guys and it ain't going to happen uh much longer is you don't hear any background noise usually when you hear my shows there's the background noise that's me on my work commute right uh, this is a 96 F350 diesel 7.3 liter, one of the loudest fucking trucks to have, you know, I think in, on planet Earth, you know, uh, but it, uh, these things are very well sought after. Anybody who's, who knows about these things, I get guys all the time, young guys and old, just yeah, hooting and hollering at me like, that's a bitchin' truck, man, you know, and the camper and everything, you know, guys who actually like rubber tramps, really, they look and they're like, that is a badass setup, man, damn, uh, so I, I get compliments on it all the time, but it's like a, uh, a workhorse, man. This thing could be rebuilt for the rest of my life. That's why I'm getting honked at and why people really like, uh, you know, they like them and they're very hard to find. They're built very, very well. So I can't help, uh, to, to pass on what is, was, uh, teach to me was that you can't afford to buy cheap tools. You're going to go get yourself a cheap old, I don't know, like a Ryobi. Maybe they're a better brand now. I don't know. But, you know, some Walmart uh, power drill. And you're working on it. This is your job. This is your livelihood. You're going to end up buying this thing like four or five times. You're going to burn the motor out. The brushes are going to wear out and things like that. Whereas if you just go one time and maybe purchase a $150 or $200 good, you know, impact drill something, you're going to have that thing for like a very, very long time. Uh, there's no disruption in your business and your time. Yes, it's an upfront cost. And I think that's probably the problem with a lot of people is, is the is the upfront cost i think that they're going to go well i don't want to do that i need to go buy something cheap just to get me by i have no problems with buying stuff cheap just to get you by but i do want you to understand that what you should do is think is this going back to buy only what's necessary do is this absolutely life-changing i think that's a big big one for yourself is like some of the practices that i look at is before you buy something like a tv or clothes i think anything uh, they say wait three days and think about it. Put the money aside and sit there and wait three days. If you still want it after three days and you find it absolutely necessary, go out and get it. No questions asked. But if you're somewhat doubtful, like, do I really need that? You know, uh, so if you're down and out or you just want to get ahead, I look at all these purchases like what, how is this particular purchase of anything that you're going to buy. I mean, I got cast iron pans from like, I think one's from like 1898 or something like that, <laughs> straight up cowboy days, you know, we're still cowboys walking around. And uh, that thing's, I'm gonna hand that down to my grandchildren. You know, that was a very good purchase and it helps me, it's it's a, it's not Teflon, it's non-stick, uh, it's heavy duty, you know, but it's gonna last forever. I could defend myself with it, you know, get all Rapunzel on somebody. Uh, <laughs> It, uh, it's, it's healthy, like I says, uh, and I never have to buy a frying pan ever again as long as I don't drop it and crack it. So think about how this investment is really going to get you ahead is the way I look at it. How is this going to make me money? Like, look at the investment, you know, is this thing going to make me healthier? Is it going to make me more comfortable uh, as far as getting to work, like, is these pants going to warm? Is this a good jacket? Is it going to keep me warm, right? Uh, is this tool going to make me money? And how? what's the best investment of this thing? How is this thing going to ROI in your life? How is it going to return on investment? If it has a small one and you absolutely could live without it, don't get it. Start saving that money. I think another thing I would like, lesson I'd like to teach people is we did a whole thing on, on how to save money. Uh, as far as like uh, with with uh, how to how to like budget and stuff like that, so one of the things I found in life, which no one ever explained to me, was I sat there and they say death and taxes is imminent. You know, it's it's the only thing that's that's definitely going to happen. And I looked at life and I I put down all these expenses, the things we're going to talk about here today, and I said, all right, let's identify them. And I found, you know, well. I got to uh, go to I go to work I make money basically right and we have a gross profit meaning all the money we made we make $20 an hour no you don't cuz Uncle Sam's going to take about a third of that right or depending on how much money you make so that's your taxes but I also sat there and said hmm so the value of uh, let's just say a dollar uh, isn't really a dollar because we're missing a lot of things there's ghost expenses and ghost expenses, what I've coined for myself is, well, when I'm driving to work, I got to pay gas. 
uh, I'm not just paying gas. There's oil changes, fuel filters and oil filters. There's spark plugs and what well, mine's a diesel, so it doesn't have spark plugs. But there's tires on your car. Just in your vehicle alone, there's a ton of things that are wearing out that, that dollar that you're going to make today, right? Uh, your home. Some of you guys uh, leave your air conditioner and your heater on at home, so when you get home, it's nice and comfortable, and you don't have to warm up the place, right? That's an expense going off. If you own your home, the roof is wearing out. There's termites probably uh, feeding, starting to feed on there. Maybe you'll catch them before they cause significant damage, but it's still a ghost expense. So there's many, many things that we look at. The biggest ghost expense to me is after you get taxed, your your 30% or whatever it is on your your taxes. Uh, so you make uh, you know a hundred thousand dollars. You're only taking like sixty five thousand uh, home, right? Uh, sixty thousand, give or take. Uh, well, you get taxed again on sales tax. So we're not thinking on these terms. Like when I go buy food, what happens? Uh, I think here in California, I can't remember. I think it's like eight point something percent. So basically, to put even numbers, let's just say it's an even ten percent by the time my, my gas and my my wear and tear on my car and stuff like that. That value of my dollar that I'm earning. Somebody takes 35 for 30 something percent of it. Then they take another 10 percent of it there, right? A two percent of that's wear and tear on my vehicle, my house. Let alone, let's even not even think about your body from you working so hard. And when you age, you're probably going to be in a wheelchair like like most people, unless you do something about it, start eating healthy and exercising things like that, lower the stress level. So the value, if you were walking down the street and a dollar was just sitting there in the gutter and you picked it up, that's not just the dollar. I don't, can't even quantify what the value of that is. It's probably like $10, right? All the energy, all the gas and things it took in taxes to make that cash dollar uh, is really worth probably 10 times or I don't even know. So you guys, hopefully you get what I just said there. Very significant. So when you make your money, uh, that's how much you made. When you go purchase that money, when you release that dollar, which is never going to come back to you again too, right? It goes out and unless you invest into an asset, that actually makes you money, which is the smartest thing for you to do, or it allows you to go out there and make money faster. You know, it's 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 like a little sidekick. You know, it's your R two D two if you're Luke Skywalker. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I hope I have explained that and didn't go too far off. I let me know if I'm helping you guys out or not. That's what I'm here for. I've actually got a lot of shit today to do today, so I'm going to cut this show short probably. Um, yeah, I'm I'm excited. I'm upgrading. I'm going to buy myself a mobile home. I'll talk about that maybe in future shows, but there's a lot of shit going right now, and I've really got to get going. Um, okay, so I know a lot of people are losing their shit. Um, strategic relocation. So I could speak from personal experience, and I think that what a lot of people do is they downsize, and they go to, like, the cheaper parts of town. Um, man, you know, there's cheaper places that I can go to out here, but you know what? I am surrounded by the rich. I've talked about this before. Uh, the amount of money I make here far surpasses anywhere I've ever been. I was paying lower rent, right, back, but I was driving uh, three to four to five hours a day. That's not even the eight-hour workday, right? Very tiring. And I wasn't, wasn't making nearly the amount of money until I looked at you and figured out, you need to go where the money's at. So I don't care if you're bartending, um, you know, if you're a grocery store clerk or what type of job you have. You're most likely going to make more money uh, around the rich, especially if you're a bartender, a restaurant, you know, a server or something like that. You're going to get bigger tips. So to live on the outskirts, fringe live the, the wealthy. I'm in construction. So if you're in a service business like a gardener, pool cleaner, something like that, you know, solar panel cleaner, whatever it is, painter, you want to fringe the rich. That's where the money's at. And I'll tell you, I've been doing it for many, many years, and it's one of the best things I've done. Uh, I also chose an area like in, in Sunnyside, San Diego, California. You know, I don't really need to use heating and cooling and stuff like that. So my expenses are relatively cheap. And there's fun shit. You know, there's the beach. I live on, I consider this Peter Pan's Island. I got the desert within, I would say, 20, 30 minutes to one way from me. I've got the mountains probably 15 minutes away from me. I've got the ocean about 30, 20 to 30 minutes away from me on the other direction. So whatever direction I drive in, I've got almost everything. 
and it's pretty. And there's all kinds of adventures and things. So life is interesting. Life is good, uh, but mostly this is about how to save money. And sometimes I think I want to say, li like fringing the rich, and maybe other things in your life. Consider thinking about it. Yes, I'm saving money by living far away, by not living in the nice part of town, you know, or near the nice part of town. It's even cheaper. But how much gas are you spending? How much time are you spending? You know, I had friends that I remember lived way out in the desert and had like this huge mansion of a house and it was super cheap. But they were like, shit, they were probably driving six hours a day and traffic and things like that was ridiculous. And even if they were commuting on the train all the way to Los Angeles, the armpit of the fucking world. Uh, but to have that big old house, we have to take consideration too is your time. You could be doing a lot of things. Like if you relocated into a city and you didn't even have a car, you were able to walk right to a job let me just explain this here and you worked at the grocery store as a grocery store clerk from nine to five well after nine to five you take off your your apron and you go to the bar and put on a new apron and you walk to it it's right down the street instead of sitting in traffic for those six hours you could work another six hours and actually make probably fucking you know 150 200 i don't even know you'll be making money um so it's more profitable so you're not losing out. Maybe that, that bartender job keeps you, you know, helps pay for the extra expense in a place, but you're living in a place that's a little bit nicer, less crime and things like that. So, yeah, strategic relocation, I think, is very important. I think a lot of people go, I'm going to move to the country and I'm going to grow my own food. Really? Sometimes, I, I mean, I have nothing against that. I do that, you know, but I don't really have much time to do those things. That's what I look at. Who's going to sit there and nurse the food? You can't have a garden without your shadow over. You have to check on that thing at least, depending on what you do. I do things a lot different, right? I only check on mine like once a week, and we're relatively okay, but I do lose a lot of plants. But who's going to pay for all the water? Who's going to pay for the time? You know, when you're, if you're working two jobs especially or a lot of hard times going on, you don't want to be out there in that garden. It's not profitable unless you go and you sell the farmer's markets and restaurants and things like that, which is very, very iffy. This pandemic, I think people have done that probably just lost their shit. You know, uh, some of them did profit. They sold to the public and things like that doing food boxes. But unless you're turning that into a business, um, to me, I would just buy your own food right now. If you're living off the dollar and you really don't have the experience, you know, you can have bad years such as I did last year with aphids where they just mowed down like 50% of everything I'd grow. So living off the land, a lot of things that we practicing permaculture, we look at here is, yeah, I love it. I think it's great. But is it bringing an REO? Is it paying the bills? You know, are you suffering? Or do you need to focus your attention on other things? So I, I look at a lot of part of my life as wasting my time on things that weren't very, there was no ROI, right? There was no return on investment. They weren't profitable as far as money goes. And that's where I look at right now is this show takes a lot of my time. And that's why I've, I've narrowed it down for those of you who've been following for a while. You know, I know I've been gone for like six, seven, eight weeks, you know, I haven't posted anything. I can't remember how long, but um, now that I'm here, and the thoughts that I had on my, my trip when I, was, when I was camping was, this thing ain't paying off. In fact, it's costing me money. So I love doing it. So that's why I'm still here. And I really want to be help to people and, and basically show people, especially the inspiring things I got on my uh, journey this year where people are like, I want to do what you do. And I'm like, well, I want to show people how to do what I do. You know, they could do your own thing. But I really looked and I said, there's not very many people that are interested in those type of things. And this podcast, I don't think we'll ever go anywhere I mean, I don't anywhere to where it'd be profitable. It's going to cost me money, so I need to really treat myself right too, and not kill myself doing five shows a week. Because I don't know if you guys understand, it takes a lot of work. Basically, to get the shit out of my mouth, is uh, I looked and I said, "Well, let's do three a week if we could even do that." Right? It's not making me money. It's costing me. It's actually a liability. Uh, I don't ever see it being an asset, like I said, because I don't think too many people are going to adhere to this type of lifestyle. It's pretty evident, you know, statistics and things, as I said on the show, most people have just a few, two, three thousand dollars in the bank at one time, and they know about all these stuff, saving techniques, they, they'll get into it for a while, and then they'll poop out, you know, and, and I'm not talking shit about people one bit, it's just it is what it fucking is. There's a lot of people, that's why people will continue to be poor for the rest of their lives and suffer. 
or just live mediocre because they're not wanting to do the extra work and change things around. They want to listen. They want to be told what to do. You know, they learn from public education and things like that. And they're just going to do it. They're going to completely do it so they can get home, inebriate, and watch TV, their favorite shows, and not really have to think about stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I did that a shit ton when I was a teenager. But what I'm saying is if there's people out there and they're going, there's got to be a better fucking way. There is. You know, we don't have to eat the sandwich that society's, you know, dealt us here. We can build our own shit. So, yeah. Um, all right, guys, I've got really got to get going. Let's finish up uh, here. The, the big top three expenses is uh, mortgage and rent. That's the very first one. When I did my identification, I just want to help you guys out here. Uh, your rent is going to be the biggest one. Your mortgage is going to be the biggest one. If you lose your house or something, really consider moving down to an RV. Uh, I kind of mentioned earlier, if you live in Arizona or the poor parts of the country, you know, or not poor parts, I'm sorry, but uh, uh, other parts of the country, it's not so expensive like Oregon, Texas and stuff like that. You literally can get the spot, live like I'm doing for half the price. You know, I'm paying $900 a month. That's water trash. I just like to add as well. It's not an expense, which is not big, but that's probably a good $100. $50 a month, maybe even 200 depending on where you live. It's paid for. You also have internet, which sucks fucking cock. But, uh, sucks cocks. That's the name of the cocks, the, uh, uh internet provider. Uh, one of them. But anyways, yeah, no matter where you're at, you guys can get out there. But the point is you want to identify those things, the biggest expenses. And that the uh, the biggest ones uh, rent like I said in mortgage and if you lose your house you want to consider you got to start over again I originally wanted to name the show like how to start over again at any age uh, let me know in the comments below uh, and there's an email if you guys want to hear about that uh, I think no matter how old you are you can literally accumulate money fast and I can tell you guys about my story and share you know possibly how much money I actually save and my strategies of like of building my building wealth, building uh, uh, asset buying power by living uh, the way I do. Um, so, anyways, identifying them. The next one is food. Uh, the next one after that is gas. So, when I started identifying to look at how, where can I save money, I really had to identify and sit back, as I told you guys. And that's what I want you guys to do: sit back and look at. Well, you, maybe you have a, a house, or not a house, but a car payment stuff. Can you downgrade that? Can you trade that car in and get something used? Or use your imagination, but use your your, your uh, senses to identify where all the expenses are. And I think this one is pretty much across the board for everybody. It's going to be your, your, your home. It's going to be your food is your next expense. And then your gas. Food, like I was talking about, you know, especially if you eat organic like I do, try to give your kids the most healthiest food, uh, you're paying a little bit more money. And I think even if you're, if you're not uh, uh, eating organic and stuff like that and you're eating like Cheerios and macaroni and cheese and shit like that, you know, uh, I think you are you might be right up there with gas. I don't know. But most people's commute, especially the poor and the, the lower middle class, uh, their commute, they have the mindset of living where it's cheaper and they're spending a lot of money on that gas. So I think that's one of the biggest expenses there. And then it starts to trickle down. I don't got time to tell every single little layer of it, but I just wanted to give you guys the gist of it. And I want you guys, to, what I want to move in next is how to map your uh, your current situation, your current life, and also to map out your future. And in order to map out how are we going to get out of this this place we're in, we kind of need to know where, why we're in. So I need you guys to identify those things for yourselves. Or you guys, I don't need you guys to do shit. You guys need to do it for yourself. Is identify all these expenses. And I think that the ghost expenses, as I explained, but also um, expense, things that got you locked down, right? So that in the future, when you go to make a purchase or do something, like for myself, I'm completely free. I can leave, I can leave today if I backed up my fucking truck. I could hook up to my RV and I'm out. Let's just say I got a better job offer or, or, I, or I, I'm actually a business owner. But let's just say I was a worker and I got a better job offer in Oregon or Texas. I could be there, shit, in the next uh, two days, right? So I kept myself fairly free. Uh, a lot of the things I have, I can easily get rid of them uh, if I so chose to. I'm not really cemented into anything. I, it gives me freedom. We got low overhead and we continue. With, it's just, I, I can't say it enough. I have never really realized how much freedom I have in my life until I start talking to other people and I start observing other people's lives, right? Uh, it's like a story. One of the park uh, guys, the maintenance guys that came over here, you know, it's like, boy, so you're just not working, huh? He's like, living the dream. I'm like, yeah, pretty much, you know, not going to work until October. 
possibly until I want. And he's like, no way. This was back, I think, in like uh, mid-August, right? And he's just like, what? You know, of course I'm doing all kinds of things, you know, my garden business and stuff like that. But he was just like, what the? He like sat there, humped over like, you're kidding me. <laughs> and then I think I pissed him off and he drove away. But yeah, you guys need to map out your current situation. Uh, very important. What's fucking going on? Uh, how the fuck do I get out of here? What do I need? You're not going to be able to change your life if you don't know where you're at, right? We need to, to understand you, when you're driving down to, from the East Coast to the West Coast or vice versa, you need to know where you're at. When planes uh, head out from a continent, you know, from one place to the other, bringing cargo, they need to know where they're at, where they're going. They need to have a, a route, a map, know how much weight they have, understand the, are the fuel levels full, understand the mechanics of your life, and uh, and figure out what you can do with that. Because if you don't understand the mechanics, you don't understand where you're at. How the fuck? And then you get stuck into something even worse. You need to get that in order. And the biggest last one I'm going to leave with you guys is that you need to get your future mapped out. You need to know what we're going from here to there. Now, a lot of people say you can plan all you want and uh, life happens. Yes, it does. But I've seen a lot of, I've experienced in my life, I've put implementations and things into my life and practices. And I knew exactly where I wanted to go. And guess what? I fucking got there. And in fact, some of it, I, I gained things and things happened better than I ever expected. Uh, yes, and then I've had hurdles. I got nothing but hurdles. It's always fires and stuff like that. And along the way to map out my future and to get things, you have to understand, you know, some stuff's just a dead horse. You're beating a dead horse to get up. It's just not going to fucking work. You know, unless you 100% believe in it and you've got solutions, uh, as I said, in order, I think people just look and it's just dumbfounded. They're like, I don't even understand. You'll understand when you understand your life situation, your current one, and then you look into your future. You understand that there's going to be hurdles, but you got to understand how is the ROI on this thing? Is this thing worth my time putting in now to get uh, to the future? And is this going to, what I do now, is this going to help my future self? Is my bettering myself? I like to coin things up and say, maybe I'm not just bettering myself, but I'm bettering the planet as well. Because it's not all just about me, my book anyways, right? So that's the beauty of life is when you have a joyful heart and you feel happy about what you're doing, magnetically things just fucking happen like good, good things. But I think the biggest thing is that one day we all, like I said earlier, taxes and death. Uh, at my uh, death, I think I'm, I already feel happy. Like I've done so much good shit. I just want to, I'm, I'm fucking... You know, I'm an asshole. I just want to do more. <laughs> and, but when you're happy, uh, people pick up on it. You yourself will sleep better. Your skin will feel better. You're, 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 you won't have this, the stress and things like that. And you do good. The world uh, does good back to you. And there's a lot of people, I think, business, and as far as it rolls into making money, um, I'm happy to say, not sorry to say, I'm happy to say that people will hire you when they see you in this mood because you're vibrating at a good uh, energy. But you're also happy with yourself and you joyfully do what is necessary and you know the things that need to get done and you don't be a little bitch about it. You just fucking do it. And you do it happily because you know it's good. It's, it's, it's good. And you get hired. You do things without even people even noticing, you know, uh, sweeping floors and taking care of. There's people that are watching more than what you think. When they observe a person of their word and a person who's happy, genuinely happy, look around you, look at people. There, A lot of people are doing things out of obligation. Uh, when you're doing things happy, people rub off on that. And that's, a, why would we ch choose any other way to live, basically? And the way to all this freedom, guys, the way for you to gain control of your, of your life and save money, you know, which was the topic of today, as I said, is to really think to yourself, map this whole thing that I just said here together. Maybe listen to it a couple times if you need to. I don't know if it was too much information. Let me know. But just put this all together and visualize your life. And once you make sense and you stop spending so much time watching fucking chicks on TikTok, you know, half naked fucking teenagers and puppy dogs fart and stuff like that, you'll actually start to get a sense of, of what's going on and what you can do. And to me, once you get the taste of freedom, again, I'm not a millionaire. I'm not a millionaire. I could be if I wanted to. Uh, but the time that I've had with my children, with myself, and developing and, and, and maturing into plans, being able to take the time off to see what's going on in other people's lives, in my life, I've been able to map out and kind of look at things and go, hmm, where do I want to go? 
what's it going to take? What are the sequence of events, of things that need to happen for, in order for me to get where I'm at? And I know for a fact when you experience the freedom that I do, you never want to go back to that fucking prison. When you can wake up whatever you want, when you're able to take naps, when you're, you're just not having a good day and you're like, you know what, fuck it, I'm not going to work, I'm going to go fish today for 30 minutes, right? Or just you have the power to work harder and make a bunch of money say, instead of taking two weeks off, I'm going to take two months off, right? I'm just going to save and I'm going to work. The harder you work, the, the smarter you do things, the more money you make, uh, the more money you can save. When catastrophes and things happen like we have going all around us right now and you're sitting in the middle going, in fact, I'm not even uh, unaffected by these things. I'm waiting to capitalize and go buy, a, uh, if the prices of homes go down, I'm going to get myself, I'm going to upscale because I can afford to do so. So not only am I just not worried about the money, you know, not, it's not like I'm sitting here arrogantly like, yeah, I'm not worried about a damn thing, but you're in the point where you're ready to start investing to actually better your life. So enough about all that fucking horse shit. That's the show, guys. Uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. I've got to apply for a loan today and many, many things. Get, get a lot of shit ready. So uh, go out there and have yourself a near life experience. Don't lose your muchness. Carry on the fire. Human up. Live it, love it, own it, and bone it, my friends.